today. Oh, come on, make some noise if you love Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. All right, you can be seated. I was, I'm just amazed to be here. What, a, what an incredible, incredible morning. And I'm so honored, uh, so honored to be here. And um, I was supposed to preach last night and got delayed, but I got in uh, to Cleveland about 1 a.m. and or whatever it was, and I'm here. And I'm jet lagged. And so who knows what I'm gonna say, y'all ready? Can I have a little keyboard? Oh, he's gone, just kidding, I didn't want it. I don't need it, I walk by faith. There's my guy, sorry. I should have communicated. Leaders communicate and I didn't. My bad. You were in a, he was in a hurry. He wants to hit his smoke break before I bring him back up. So it's like, I got to hit my great vape pen. What? I'm kidding. I'm so honored, uh, honestly, to be here. I, I've, been, I've been coming here a long time, man. And I'm so grateful for the faithfulness, the consistency, the integrity, uh, the vision of uh, faith family of Pastor Mike, Pastor Barb, Kim and Eddie, and uh, just what they have let God use them to build uh, over all these years. And, and it's really incredible to, uh, in, in their stage right now, building more campuses, doing more for God, being more aggressive for the kingdom than ever before. Uh, they're, they're, they're not taking their foot off the gas, they're putting their foot on the gas. And I think, I don't know, that's, just, that's amazing. And I honor you guys, and I love you so much. Thank you. Every, every time you guys invite me, I'm, I'm honored and grateful. And um, I always wonder, is this the last year that Faith Family's gonna let me come? Is this, and you just keep saying, come back. And so I'm honored to be back. And you know what? I think I've been coming, I don't know, 11, 12 years. I've still never been to the football thing. I've still never been. I'm always preaching. I'm always in prayer. The other guest speakers go to the Football Hall of Fame and relax. I'm in fasting and prayer. Amen. Can you tell I've been fasting? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I'm very honored to be here and uh, very grateful. Can we show our love to our senior pastors this morning? Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands and show some love. Thank you, Josh, uh, for this opportunity. I honor you. Uh, we, we swapped sessions. He was supposed to preach this morning. I was supposed to preach last night. I called him yesterday from the airport. I said, I'm not getting there, dog. And, uh, and so he, he preached incredibly last night. Show some love for Josh the preacher, pancher. And... Uh, I want to honor Noah Nickel, my, my brother, who, who I've known for so long. The first time we ever came to Love is Red a million years ago, we made Noah at 4 a.m. drive us to LeBron's house. We wanted to see LeBron's house. So he made Noah take us to LeBron's house and then eat Waffle House. And uh, he's still never forgiven me for that, but thank you for doing it. <laughs> And just so many great friends uh, who are here. Really excited to hear from John Lorenzo tonight and uh, such a great preacher and uh, Tim Summers, who I love so much. Tim Summers, right back from Australia, mate. Landed back in America yesterday from Australia and he's with you today. And I know he has a word from the Lord. I love you. One of the greatest preachers and pastors. And... Uh, I'm gonna butcher his last name because I always do. Uh, but Luke De Benedetto, did I hit it? Did I do okay? De Benedetto, is that close enough? I don't know. Where is he? Is Luke here or is Luke? Oh, he's yeah. He decided not to come to this session, and I'm honoring him. Well, Luke, I take back my honor. <laughs> and um, no, Luke. Luke is an incredible. Uh, young man, and, uh, and I love him and his family so much. All right, let's go to the Word of God. Genesis 32, I'm gonna read just a couple of verses for you. Are you ready for the Word? Anybody ready for this? 
Genesis 32, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he, as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go. I love that. I love that God picks the fight and then immediately withdraws. It says, let me go. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with man and have overcome. Jacob said, well, I, I've told you my name. Would you, would you tell me your name? But he replied, why do you ask me my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel. It is because I saw God face to face and my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. I wanna, I wanna try to teach you a life principle today. I, I'm, I'm not cool, I'm not a youth pastor, I'm not young, I'm 40 and I'm wearing Spanx to try to keep me somewhat in line under here. So, uh, OG Spanx, when they used to make Spanx for men, now it's just for women by women, but they used to make them for men. Just, I felt like I needed to clarify that so you didn't think I was wearing a woman's undergarment. So anyway, <laughs> so I, 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 know, I know my place. I'm 40, I'm a senior pastor. I wanna teach you a life principle today that I've, that I've lived for a long time. And if you'll live it for a long time, it'll change your life. Anybody ready for God to change your life? And so, I wanna talk about how to surrender to God, how to surrender to God, how to surrender to God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we do settle our hearts. We surrender our hearts to you right now. We expect a word from you, and we believe that just one word from you can change everything about our life and our destiny and our future. And so we are, we are saying yes to this moment. Our ears are open. Our hearts are open. We believe now, Lord, that you will speak to us. I pray, Holy Spirit, go beyond my weakness and my frailty and these little thoughts that I've written down. Go beyond all of that and speak, God, to your people. I pray this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen and amen. Let's clap our hands one more time for the Lord and for our keyboard player. Love you. Give me 30 minutes and come back up and... Bring the, whole, bring the whole band with you. Uh, we find Jacob on the run. He is running from his brother Esau and he's running from his father-in-law Laban. He has stolen from his brother Esau. He has lied to his father-in-law Laban and now he's running. Um, he's being hunted by both men. Both men want to kill him. This is where we find him, running from his brother, running from his father-in-law, running from his decisions, running from his choices, running from God. We can define Jacob's entire life and emotional state in one verse. If, if you want Jacob 101, if you want Jacob's life verse, it is not John 3, 16. It is not Psalm 23. It is not Ephesians 3, 20. This is Jacob in a nutshell, Genesis 31, 31. I rushed away because I was afraid. That's Jacob. On the run, driven by fear, never settled, never content, never at peace, always chasing the next thing. That's Jacob. Unsettled, discontent, rushing away, and it's here that God meets him. Meets him in his weakness. Meets him, frankly, in his cowardness. He, he, he sent his wives and his kids and his servants on ahead of him. Uh, not to be brave, but he thought 
maybe Laban or Esau will get to them first. This, this man is at his lowest point, and it's at his lowest point that God meets with him. It's at his lowest point that he doesn't find God, God finds him. It's at his lowest point that God grabs him. It's at his lowest point that God reaches out to him. It's at his lowest point that God wrestles with him. I'm so grateful because this is the grace of God that, I, that when I was running from God, I can't run too far before I run back into God, that his grace keeps finding me, his grace keeps showing up, his grace keeps grabbing me, that even when I run from God, he runs faster than me. I saw this little boy running through a parking lot the other day, about four years old, running from his father, running, laughing, running. He had no idea the dangers he was in. He had no idea about the cars. He had no idea about all the strangers. He had no idea of what a dangerous situation he put himself in. But I was so grateful to watch that father outrun the rebellion of the son. And when I saw that happen, I did not think for a moment, I'm the dad. I looked at that, I went, I'm that dumb little kid, that's me. I keep running, but he keeps showing up. I keep running, but he keeps running faster. I keep running, but he keeps finding me. Anybody grateful for the grace of God? Anybody grateful for mer mercies that are new every morning? God finds Jacob at his lowest. It is here that God meets him. It is here that God changes him. It is here that God allows him to begin again. And you might feel very far from God today. You might feel very ashamed today. You might feel like, man, I don't know if, if this is for me. Maybe this is for everyone else on my row, everyone else in my section, but this can't be for me. Jabin, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know where I've been. I don't, I don't. But I don't need to know. Because the thing that I do know is more powerful than the things that I don't know. And here's what I do know, I know God. I know God, I know grace, I know Jesus. I know the working of the Holy Spirit. I know how God can grab a hold of a Jacob and turn him into an Israel. I know what God did in my life and I know that if he did it for me, he could do it for you. If he's ever done it for anybody, he can do it for everybody. So how do I surrender to God? How do I surrender to God? Well, number one, you gotta stop running. You gotta stop running. The, the, the scripture said Jacob was left alone. Th this man's never been alone. Uh, researchers call this crowded loneliness. You're lonely, you're isolated, but you're always in a crowd, you're always in a group. Because, because the, the group deceives you into feeling like I'm connected. Jacob's always been around people, he's always, he's always been in motion, but never at peace. He, he was chasing his father's approval. He was now running from Esau and running from Laban. And it's finally here that Jacob is left alone. It's finally here that he stops the movement. He stops running. And here, here's what I've learned, friends. And in, in, I've been walking with Jesus 25 years. I've been in ministry for 20 years. I've been pastoring for six years. I just tell you all that to tell you this. What I've witnessed from most people is that they simply run from issue to issue. And they never deal with their Jacob. They run from issue to issue. And because they're moving, they think they're progressing. So we go from boyfriend to boyfriend, girlfriend to girlfriend, spouse to spouse, city to city, job to job, church to church, on and on. And, and we, we have convinced ourselves that it must be everyone else, when in reality we're the only common denominator. <laughs> I don't know, you'll, you'll figure this out, but, but listen, wherever you go, there you are. And I can keep running, but I'm going to keep running into me. So I might as well deal with me. I might as well deal with the junk 
in my soul. And, and it's here that, that, that Jacob is gonna have to make the decision, I gotta stop running, I gotta stop running from issue to issue, struggle to struggle, addiction to addiction, from thing to thing and person to person. It's here that God offers a better way and the better way that God offers to every one of us. And, and I said, this is my lifestyle. You gotta understand this. This is not a one-time thing. But you, you've gotta embrace repentance as a part of your surrender. Jesus said, repent of your sins. Turn to God. See, repent is not a bad word. Repent is not some emotional word. Repent is not some word that should only be used by angry preachers in the South. Come on, somebody. Repent with an I. Amen? Come on, somebody. Repent. You need to repent. It's like, I know. <laughs> they just spit. Sorry, brother. My bad. I just saw you there. Huh? It freaked me out. <laughs> Didn't notice you until I spat on you. I'm sorry. Let's take that out of the video. Repent. We, we think of repentance as boohooing at an altar, and it could be. We think of repentance as shame or guilt, and maybe there, there is some of that emotion. But, but what Jesus is really saying is he's saying, turn from the thing that's destroying you and turn to the one who can heal you. Turn from the thing that's breaking your heart and turn to the one that can heal your heart. Turn from the thing that's satisfying you right now and turn to the one that can give you purpose and destiny for the rest of your life. Every time I turn from sin, if I don't turn to God, I'll just repeat the sin in a greater level. The power of repentance is not guilt, it's God. The power of repentance is not turning from something, but turning to the right one. Jesus said, I have, a, I have a gift for you called repentance for the kingdom of heaven is near, that God is near, that God is here, that God is right here, right now, that God is not far away. God is not over there somewhere, but he's, but he's here and now and you can turn to him. See, the, the book of Ephesians tells us, Ephesians 5.18, don't get drunk with wine, it's gonna mess up your life. Don't get drunk with wine, it's going to lead to debauchery, it's going to lead to excess, it's going to ruin your life. Don't get drunk with wine, instead, be filled. Everybody say, be filled. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. What, what the Apostle Paul is saying is he's saying, don't settle for a cheap imitation of the eternal. Never forget this, everything the devil offers you is a fake weak imitation version of the thing that God has for you. The devil offers you happiness right now. God offers you joy forever. The devil offers you lust. God offers you real love. The devil offers you unforgiveness and bitterness and hate. God offers you restoration and grace and mercy. The, the devil offers you pain and depression. God offers you real joy that can set you free. The devil offers you right here, right now. God offers you something that will last forever. Don't get drunk. Don't, don't settle, Jacob. Don't settle for the imitation. Don't settle for the thing that, that, that would satisfy you now for a second when God has something that can satisfy you for eternity. Be filled with the whole. I'm just talking about how to turn to God. I'm just talking about how you're going to walk in this relationship with God. You're going to need the Holy Spirit every day. Not once a year at Love is Red. Not once a year at camp. Not once a year when the youth pastor preaches real good at, at, on a Wednesday night and you have a boohoo moment. Every day I need the Holy Spirit because I got to eat every day. I got to drink water every day. And I need the Holy Spirit every day. And every time I reject the working and the gift of the Holy Spirit in my life, I am open to the cheap imitation wine of the devil. Repentance. See, the scripture said that this happened, this whole story happens at the Jabok River. Jabok, Jabok. It's just a, a word that means to empty. It just means to let go of. It just means to empty of. And I have to get to the place where I empty myself of everything that I can do and really let God fill me. 
where I get to the place of pouring out and I get to the place where I say, I've got to decrease so God can increase. Stop running, stop running. Number two, you have to admit you have issues. <laughs> you got issues and you got to admit it. Most people don't. How you doing? Good. How's it going? Good. Good. Y'all good? Good. Everything good? Good. How's school? Good. How's work? Good. How your parents? Good. How's life? Good. How's your faith? Good. I'm telling you, I have not walked with Jesus for 25 years by faking it. Now, you don't got to let the whole world know what you're going through, but somebody has to know. And by the way, not just somebody, somebody who can help you has to know. Amen. <laughs> you you got to have people in your life. You got to have people that you can admit that you have issues. God said, what's your name? I'm Jacob. Jacob. Now, but names don't mean a lot anymore, right? We just name our kid, whatever, go and name our kid. That's cool. But in the Bible days, names meant everything. And the scripture said that when Jacob and Esau were being born, there was a fight in the womb. From the very beginning, there was conflict. And as Esau was being born, Jacob grabbed a hold of Esau. And when their mother, Rebekah, saw it, she spoke, maybe knowingly, unknowingly, willingly, unwillingly, I'm not sure, but she spoke a curse over Jacob in that moment and went, oh, this is my troublemaker. This is my deceiver. This is my problem child. This is my heel grabber. This is, this is my supplanter. This is my deceiver. This is... All of those words mean Jacob. And she spoke something over him that he would carry and walk with the rest of his life. One scholar said that when God asked Jacob, what's your name? It was the first time Jacob had used his name in 20 years. Because see, we can end up sugarcoating what's really going on in our life. What's your name? I'm Abraham's grandson. Who are you? I'm Isaac's kid. I'm one of the sons of promise. Who are you? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Esau's brother. Who are you? Oh, I'm Laban's son-in-law. Who are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. Glory to God. Praise God. Everything's good. Glory to God. Praise God. And you know what? That's true. Ish. But until you admit, I'm Jacob. I got problems. I, I have been living according to the curse and the false prophecy that was spoken over me by a woman who was in pain. I've been living according to her pain, not my potential. Her pain, not God's promise. Her issues, not God's destiny for my life. I have become who they told me I was. And every one of you will have to face lying voices that will try to tell you who you are when they don't know who you are and they don't know your future and they don't know your God. God says, what's your, can you admit where you're at so that I can do something with your life? See, the first step of freedom is admitting. So I come from a faith background. I'm a faith guy. But Jesus never said deny the mountain. He said talk to the mountain. He didn't say deny the giant. He said talk to the giant. Throw a stone at the giant. Pick a fight with the giant. And I, and I could walk around, I'm blessed, 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 I'm blessed. And I'm, and I'm kind of telling the truth, but I'm not dealing with what's going on in my heart. I got a Jacob in me that I need God to change into an Israel. You know, Jesus is preaching. It's one of his most famous sermons. John chapter 8. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, we know it. That's a big one. That's like a top 10. It's not a Psalm 23, but it's a top 10. 
It's not a Michael Jordan, but it's a LeBron James. Amen. It's up there. It's, it's. What? It, you know, it's a big one, right? It's a big one. It's, it's up there. We celebrate. We sing about it. We write bangers about it. It's on the CCLI top 100 about, like we, we sing, we love that scripture. Who the says that's free, free indeed. You know, when Jesus preached it, they didn't like it. No, read the Bible. We're about to. I'm going to prove it to you. The scripture said, when Jesus spoke to the people who believed in him, that means they were believers. Here's what he tells believers, whom the son sets free is free indeed. I want to say, I know you believe in me. I know you're going to heaven, but I can set you free. I know, I, 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 I love you. I'm going to die for you. Heaven will be your home, but you can be free on earth. You don't have to deal with these issues forever. You don't have to live in cycles forever. You don't have to live in bondage forever. I, I've come to, I haven't just come to save you. I've come to liberate you. And they did not say, yeah, they did not shout amen. Here's what they said. We've never been slaves to anyone. Look at John 8, 33. We've never been slaves to anyone. We're Abraham's kids. Next one, not Matthew. John chapter, we've never been slaves to anyone. I'm a child of God. I'm a king's kid. I'm part of Israel. I'm, I'm, I've never been enslaved to anyone. How dare you tell me God needs to set me free? Um, never? We've never? Yo, quick history lesson. Egypt? Hello? Ten plagues? Pharaoh? Red Sea? Egypt? Uh, the Assyrians? Babylon? Oh, how about this? Rome? They were slaves then. They couldn't blink without Rome's approval. They were under Roman occupation. We've never been slaves to anybody. Is this okay, Caesar? They were under submission to Caesar in the moment. Enslaved, saying they're free. In bondage, saying they're blessed. Jacob had to get real about the fact that I've become the very thing they told me I'd become. You're just like your father. You're just like all the other men in your house. Every woman in our family gets cancer. Everyone has to at least have one divorce to try it out. Nobody makes money. Nobody breaks into six figures. Who do you think you are saying you're going to go to college? No one in our family goes to college. How dare you talk about being in ministry? Oh, you're going to be a preacher now? Oh, you're going to start preaching to us? What's the Bible say? And if you're not careful, you will let Rebecca curse you into a a future that God never destined for you. Oh, but okay, I feel the anointing now. Here we go. Somebody shout right now. Come on, I'm about to preach a little bit. I'm preaching to some Jacobs today that are saying, I got some issues on the inside. But I believe in the God who can change my name. I believe in the God who can rewrite my story. I believe in the God that can change my future. So so here's 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 my last point. You got to hold on to God. Jabin, what's the secret to your success? I just keep showing up. I just keep reading my Bible. I just keep praying. I just keep forgiving idiots. Amen. <laughs> and I keep repenting when I am an idiot like once every 10 years, amen, it's never my fault. Um, I just keep, I just keep, show, you gotta hold on to God, watch. Watch this, watch this, watch this. God begins to wrestle with Jacob and then immediately God goes, let me go. God picks the fight and then tries to end the fight. And I have struggled with this text my whole Christian life. I've never preached this text until this year because I didn't, I didn't get it. And I don't preach on stuff that I don't understand it. So I would just, I would just, I would read Genesis 32 and go, what is up? And I finally figured it out. God said, go ahead. I give you permission to run away from me like you've run away from everybody. 
Go ahead, Jacob. Just keep repeating what you've always done and keep getting what you've always got. And God is testing Jacob by giving him the freedom to let go. And Jacob finally decides, I'm done running. Hear me, friend. Look at me. Look at me. Every, every eye. Look, you can run or you can wrestle, but you can't do both. I don't know a lot about running. Amen. <laughs> and I know nothing about wrestling, but I know this. You can't do them at the same time. The, the, the. The official sport of Las Vegas is mixed martial arts. And if you go to a UFC fight and that fighter doesn't want to fight, he just wants to run around the octagon, that crowd gets ugly quick because they did not show up at a UFC fight to watch someone run laps. They, they came to watch someone throw blows. Listen, you can run or you can wrestle, but you can't do both. And, and, and Jacob had to decide, will I run again? Or will I wrestle? Jacob, are you gonna run from me like you ran from home? Are you gonna run from me like you ran from Esau? Are you gonna run from me like you ran from Laban? Are you gonna run from me like you ran from your family? Or are you finally going to wrestle with God and with man? Are you gonna continue to be overcome or will you become an overcomer? Every person has to choose to wrestle. And not run. Let me have some band play a little bit. I, 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 I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just here because I just didn't quit. I'm just here because I just kept showing up. I'm, I'm just here because I kept loving God. Honestly, three months ago, I, I quit. I walked into the kitchen about 10 o'clock at night. My wife was in the kitchen. She's my pastor. Amen. And I walked in and I said, Pastor Mike, I said, I quit. And then I went into the freezer. I grabbed like a gallon of Bluebell. You know what I mean? Like a big thing of ice cream. I said, I quit. You can have the church or you can give it to one of our board members, but y'all figure it out. I'm quitting. I'm, I'm going to go eat my ice cream. I'm quitting. And I started to walk out of the kitchen. And she said, no. And I said, what? She said, you, you can't. I'm not going to let you. And I said, okay. So I just took my ice cream upstairs and stayed in the ministry. Amen. And here I am. wasn't very spiritual. I'm just really afraid of my wife. Come on, somebody. You just don't quit. You get discouraged. You just don't quit. What, you, you think they built this church by running? No, you got to wrestle for this. You got to wrestle to change a community. You got to wrestle to change a generation. You got to wrestle to see lives change. You got to, you got to wrestle to break the curse. You got to wrestle to see those demons break off of your family. You got to you got to wrestle every once in a while. You got you to gotta show up when you don't want to show up. <laughs> Watch. Jacob called the place Peniel, which means face to face. Please look at me. He had experienced God in Bethel chapter 28 whoa this is the house of God whoa church whoa this is cool whoa I love the band whoa the preacher is good whoa can't wait to hear Tim whoa I can't wow this is cool wow. he he had been around God he knew about God he knew how to play church that was chapter 28, but now finally in 32, he meets God. Can I tell you what happened to me June 10, 1998, when I was 15 years old? I met God. I knew how to play church from the day I was born because I was born and raised in church. I knew when to lift my hands. I knew when to sing the song. I knew when to cry. I grew up in Pentecost. I knew when to fall out. But I didn't know God. I knew Bethel, but I did not know Peniel. I knew church, but I didn't know the head of the church. I knew about God, but I didn't know God. 
And until you wrestle, you don't see God. Because as long as you're running, you won't see him. And Jacob finally does the thing that every person in this room has to do. God, who are you? What's your name? It's the question Moses had to ask in Exodus 3. It's the question David asked in Psalm 18. It's the question Peter needed to answer in Matthew 16. It's the question the disciples asked in Matthew 8. It's, it's the question Paul asked in Acts chapter 9. God, who, what's your name? And when you ask God to reveal himself to you, he will. Starting from scratch, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark, but actually find him. Our God doesn't play hide and seek with us. He's not remote. He's near. What's your name? And God blesses him and changes his name. Wait a minute, wait a minute, no. God blesses him by changing his name. Watch me. What's your name, God? I bless you. That's who I am. Who are you? I bless you. You know what that word blessing means? It means to speak words of blessing and life and approval. I'm the thing you really needed. You didn't need daddy's blessing. You needed my blessing. You didn't need Esau's blessing. You needed my blessing. You didn't need... You did not need Laban's daughters. You needed my blessing. You did not need Rebecca's words of life. You needed my blessing. What you need is God. What you need is the approval of the Father. What you need is an old-fashioned blessing from God. And it is here that God says, you are no longer Jacob. You are Israel. You are not what they told you. You are not what you've done. You are not your worst moment. You are not the curse of your mother. You are not the ignorance of your father. You are not the hate of your brother. You are who God says you are. Somebody shout, you are loved. You are healed. You are a child of God. You are saved. You are redeemed from the curse. You are holy. You are forgiven. You are free. You are well supplied. You are protected. You are promised. You are no longer Jacob. You are Israel. Come on, if you're grateful for it, give God the best, 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 best. Shout of praise. I'm, I'm asking for somebody to wrestle with God today. I'm asking you to stop running from God today. I'm asking you to hold on to God today. I'm asking you to see God face to face today. And if you will, God will reveal himself. Come on, let's sing holy, holy, holy.
Stay right where you're at. So Jacob started by running. And then he was wrestling. But by the end of the story, he's, he's limping. I don't trust anybody who doesn't have a limp. Oh, hear my heart. I'm not, I'm not talking about swag. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, ow, God got me. God don't let me talk like that no more. God don't let me laugh at that no more. God don't, God don't let me sleep with them no more. God, God don't let me hate people no more. God, God made me generous. God, God stepped on my toes. I, I need God. Woo, I need God. Ow, I need God. And at the end of his life, at the end of his life, bring it down once, and then we're going to sing again. At the end of his life, end of his life, Hebrews chapter 11, the scripture said he's leaning on his staff. He's leaning on his reminder of his God encounter. I'm just talking about how to surrender to God. I'm, I'm just talking about leaning on the thing you know you need. And he leans on his staff. And here's how he ends his life. The scripture said, worshiping and blessing his sons. The man that was stealing blessings is now giving blessings. The man who did not think there was enough for him and his brother is now blessing 12 brothers. The man who spent the first half of his life taking spends the rest of his life giving. And I feel that because because you see me now, but I remember Jacob. You see me now, but I remember Belen, New Mexico, population 1,500 people in a trailer park. Tim, Tim used to live in Albuquerque. He, 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 he knows Albuquerque. He knows where I'm from. He knows. I was from small. I was from, I'm talking little thinking. I was, I was from a poverty scarcity mindset. I was from a, how, how much can I take? And then I met God. And he, he made me an overcomer. I stopped looking for a handout. Now I try to figure out how much can I give and not die? I'm serious. I'm like, how, how, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this year to outgive God. I'm going to try. He won't let me, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to beat God at generosity. I've failed every year, but I keep trying. But everything in me wants to take. Everything in me wants to be small. Everything in me wants to be all about me. But I just kept wrestling with God. And he, he made me into something that I could have never been without him. Something I could not learn from my family. Something I could not learn from my surroundings. I had to learn it from God. And now my daughter will never know small. I'm not, I'm not talking about big houses or fast cars or I'm not talking, I'm talking about 
every, everything that that kid hears is believe God big, change the world. You're a curse breaker. You're a history maker. You're a world changer. Give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. Watch God bring it back. Give it away, give it away, watch God. She, there is not a, there is not an ounce of scarcity in her soul. And I don't take the credit for that. But I wrestled with the name changer. And he changed me. Listen to me, Jacob, he'll change you. Now that little Jacob, he's still in there somewhere. He still fights me all the time. But I just keep surrendering to God. And so Israel keeps getting stronger. I, I no longer call you Jacob. I call you Israel because you, you wrestled with God and with man. You, you dealt with your God issues and your people issues and you overcame. You became an overcomer. That's going to be your story. I said, that's going to be your story. Say amen. That's going to be your story. I said, that's going to be your story in the name of Jesus. Your children will never know addiction. Your children will never know poverty. Your children will never know sickness and disease. Your children will never know divorce. Your children will never know hate. Your children will never know violence. Your children will never know cursing. Your children are going to live under the blessing that God put on the inside of you because you chose to surrender. Just with your hands lifted, I, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you. And I ask Holy Spirit right now, would you open our spiritual ears to hear the voice of our Heavenly Father? Say, this is my son whom I'm well pleased, whom I love. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you and make his face to shine on you. I pray that the Lord would lift up his countenance upon you, turn his face towards you and give you his peace. I place the name of the Lord on you right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare you are blessed. I declare you're a chain breaker. I declare you're a curse breaker. I declare that you're a mountain mover. I declare that everything that God puts in your heart will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare you're more than a conqueror. I declare you are mighty in God. I declare that God has given you everything you need to do everything he's called you to do. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are no longer Jacob. You are Israel. And if you receive it and if you believe it, come on, I want you to give God the biggest shout. Come on, shout like thunder. Shout like, shout like you believe that everything changes with you. Come on, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy, 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 holy. Come on, cry out to heaven. Close your eyes and worship. Lift your voice and worship. and cry home. 